This is the teardown of the brand new iPhone 7. This is a 32 gigabyte rose gold mono, straight out of the box. Let me go ahead and get in the settings just so you can see it. It's running iOS 10.0. That's a 32 gigabyte mono. Let's go ahead and get into the teardown. I'm going to go ahead and power it down. Now the first thing you need to do, and the iPhone teardown, is take out the bottom two pentalobe screws. These are proprietary screws used mainly by Apple. Actually, I think only by Apple. We can go ahead and take those out. There's two of them. Um, it's kind of cool because they do match the color of these phones pretty well. These are rose gold screws. Once you have that, the reason why this phone is waterproof is there's an adhesive gasket all the way around this screen. In order to get this gasket, there are two methods. You can either heat this phone and then use a nice SMO, or you can heat this phone and use a suction cup or some other form of um, suction object. So we're going to use the SSMO. What we're going to do is we're going to take the SSMO, go in directly underneath the edge of the glass, push down. You want to get this tip of this SSMO down into the phone. You're going to lift up slightly, kind of bring it in down towards the edge, and turn ever so slightly like a key. You're going to do this on the other side now. And now you're going to bring your SSMO, see how we have it slightly open, down the edge of the phone, turning like a key ever so slightly until you get the device open almost all the way. Now this iPhone is different than all other iPhones because of the way it opens. To open this, you're going to grab the phone itself and the screen itself, pull slightly down you can see just how far down we had to pull and this phone opens to the side now the first thing you want to do in any phone repair once you have the device open is disconnect the battery and the battery is underneath this plate right here this also houses your digitizer assembly or your digitizer cables your LCD cables we'll go ahead and get these four screws out Another cool change to the iPhone is they switched from triple zero pentalobe or triple zero Phillips screwdrivers to triple zero triwing. Um, this is really the first time I've seen this in Apple. Um, they are a little bit harder to strip. Um, you can put a little bit more force on them, but I think it was just a change to prevent people from really working on the device. Go ahead and pull out this plate. Here we have your digitizer and LCD connector and your battery. So the battery, we're just going to use our fingernail, get up underneath there, and pull that up. Let's go ahead and get the digi and LCD connector as well. Now, you're not done quite yet. You can't separate the LCD from the body of the phone because you have these two screws here, which are holding down your proximity sensor. These are actually a triple zero Phillips. Um, Apple kind of switched it up with that as well. They use multiple different types of screws internally. There are two screws that holds down another plate. Once those two screws are out, the plate can slide out to the side of the phone. We can get our fingernail in underneath this proximity sensor connector. Uh, we're going to use this metal SSMO. Since the device is off, there's not as much chance of shorting out a phone. All right, and there's your display. We're going to set the phone off to the side. We're going to get into this display now. Um, most of the screws in this display are tri-wing, except for the um, screws in the ear speaker, loudspeaker assembly. Um, the reason why the iPhone 7 is stereo is because not only does it have the internal speaker at the bottom, the ear speaker doubles as an external speaker. So we're going to go ahead and take off that assembly. There's actually a bracket that holds it down. There are three Phillips screwdrivers in that. Once you get these three screws out, the bracket holding down the camera will move out of the way. And pull your camera back. You can take out these two screws holding in the loudspeaker assembly or your ear speaker, depends on what you're using it for. Once 
once you have those two screws out, the ear speaker will lift out. Now the proximity sensor in this phone is bent kind of weird. The easiest way I've found to get it out is with your iSysmo. Come under this edge, pull up ever so slightly until you get underneath the contacts for the ear speaker. Just wiggle it down while prying up ever so gently. And then this whole thing will fold over to the other side. Where the proximity sensor is seated, you'll have to get up underneath it and kind of pull up gently. And that is your full proximity sensor. Once proximity sensor is out, I would move on to the Touch ID assembly. And that is held in with your triple zero tri-wings. There are four screws holding the bracket in. And the cool thing about this is the home button doesn't click anymore. It's actually uh, set in place and the Taptic Engine is actually what creates your feedback and your screws holding this button in place. So we'll go ahead and take this bracket up. And now we're going to separate the connector right here just by getting the SSMO in between the two pieces of the connector. There we go. Now this connector actually sits in the connector. So we're just going to slowly pull up on here. I want to try and get this connector out of the way if possible. Slowly pull up. Be very gentle. I don't know if the Touch ID is married on this device or not, like in past generations. Kind of cool on this, there's a gasket around it, and it actually goes from the front of the phone now, not from the back. So it'll actually slide out of the front. Just a little bit of pressure from this side of the phone will push it out. Now, once those screws are out, you're ready to take off the LCD back plate. There are six screws holding it in, all triple zero tri wing, and they're down the sides. Alright, now once those screws are out, ready to take your ISSMO and lift up on the LCD back plate. Be careful not to get under the 3D touch sensor, uh, you can't damage it. I'm going to go ahead and stand this on end. You can see that the actual cables are now adhered to this plate. So what you do is you take your ISSMO, get it in between the cables and the plate, and just turn ever so slightly. You don't want to uh, tear this. And there's your LCD back plate. And that is the full teardown of the LCD. Um, I don't see any more screws needing to come out to do a replacement, um, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll add to this video if we have to in the future. So we're going to go and throw it back together. This is just the LCD, so assume this is a new LCD. Since this is the day this phone came out, we do not have access to an LCD yet. So fold down your cables. Your plate just sits back down on top. Line up all the side mounts. Okay. The adhesive will re-adhere. So. Go ahead and put back in all your LCD screws. There are six of them. Tri-wing, triple zeros. These tri-wings don't like to work with a magnetic screwdriver as well as Phillips do.
try it this way. That seemed to work a little bit better. Just laying the screed down and kind of wiggling the screw on the end. So the six screws are back in. Then you go ahead and put back in the home button assembly. Remember, the cable goes up through the face of the phone. And then the home button just sits down in the hole. The cable where it plugs into actually goes in between the flex and the connector. And as always, there's a locator pin on the display right here. You can go ahead and locate it down with that. Go ahead and push that down and connect it. All right. Now we're going to slide this connect this cover up underneath the two mounts on the back plate. It did come out that way. Oop. There we go. There's a locator pin right here that'll help you locate that. Put these four screws back in. Remember the center screw of these three right here actually holds the button in place. Um, I kind of like that design a lot better just because the buttons were kind of flimsy in the past models. Man, I miss my Phillips. got the home button back in it's time to move on to the proximity sensor you got your two locator pins on the connector right here they're going to locate on the two tabs there remember you need to actually put the proximity itself into its well first since it does fold back onto it Two locator pins are in place. Push down your proximity sensor into the well. Just make sure everything gets lined up properly. There we go. Once your proximity sensor is in place, go ahead and put in your ear or loudspeaker assembly and screw in the two Phillips screws on the bottom side that were holding it in place. Once those two screws are in, you can put your camera down. It may pop out, that's okay. Get that screw out. Put the bracket in place. It'll hold your camera in place. And put the three screws that hold that back on back in place. There are two on the right hand side and one on the left. They are of different sizes. Always make sure you're not mixing up screws because um, a screw in the wrong place can destroy a phone. Once your ear speaker assembly is back in place, you're actually ready to put your LCD back on the body of the phone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just connect all the connectors back into place except the battery, um, just because it'll kind of help you line everything back up. One up 
top, two on the bottom. And I'm assuming the two on the bottom also somehow use the touch ID sensor since there's not a third altogether. So I'm sure it runs through one of those two. I'm not sure which one. Let's go ahead and put this back in place. This just slides in. This is the cover to the proximity sensor connector. I think those are Phillips as well. Yep, yeah, those are Phillips. If you do mix up screws, I think the difference between Phillips and Tri-Wing will help you sort them out in the long run. There we go, those two are in place. Now that those two are in place, we're going to go ahead and hook the battery back up and put the plate back over the battery. Four screws hold this plate in place. They're all Tri-Wing. I like to start with the longest one just because it's the easiest one to get in. And that's the far right. Man. There we go. Okay. And then the top. Go on down. bottom one. If I can get that to stick to my screwdriver. So far every screw in this phone is magnetic. It's not like the 5, I think in the 5C, 5S, they all had one non-magnetic non screw. Alright, once all your screws are back in place, go ahead and lay your screen back down on your phone. Pull it ever so slightly down. There are hooks on the top of your screen. Three of them. You want to get those in under the edge of the top of the phone, push up, and then start working your way up the phone, pushing it all back into place. And your adhesive will read here. Um, I can't guarantee this will be waterproof when it's done, but it will stay down well due to that adhesive. Once you have that all back in place, you're ready for your two penelope screws on the bottom. Let's go ahead and fire it back up, make sure it still works. There you have it. CLCD replacement for the iPhone 7.